It's the most curious paradox that those philosophers of the 19th century who denied the supernatural origin of man and who insisted that man is simply a part of nature, one of the members of nature, nevertheless set up a state of alienation between man and nature without presence. I am a part of nature. I am something that nature uh, fluked into being. But nevertheless, this fluke is something that nature doesn't care about. It doesn't care about my ego and its future. All that is important to nature is the species. The individual is irrelevant. At the same time, this philosophy uh, arose when we were be becoming conscious of the sheer magnitude of the universe. And it took the first impression of this vastness as a pretext for making little of human beings and saying, what do you matter in this huge cosmos? You're just a little fluke. You're just a little nothing at all. This thing goes way on, 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 beyond all imagination. Therefore, man is just so much funded on a rock. A very tiny rock at that. The satanic one himself. In other words, it took the stance. Let's set up a scale between two limits. We will, and this is the traditional Western uh, opposition. On the one end of the scale to the left here, you have matter. The inert, the clay, put into shape of the pot. On the other end of the scale, you have spirit, which is intelligence. And these are what the mathematicians call limits. And the limit is something you approach, but you never actually get there. Now, what the 19th century mythology did was to think of all things towards the limit called matter. It said, in effect, uh, there is this dead material stuff it is energetic, but the energy is unintelligent. It's an, uh, a, a kind of um, roaring mechanical energy like fire or electricity or so on. It is not intelligent. And everything is really that. What we call human intelligence and consciousness are merely complicated forms of this primordial energy. And... Uh, they are nothing but that.